I'll admit, the first impression I got from Princess Cruise Line was that this was a hoity-toity cruise line and probably for older folks. I expected that we would need to dress up every day when we eat in the main dining room, that maybe there was little in the way of things to do on board aside from slow dancing to classical music or oldies or lounging around in your stateroom or on the pool deck. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Hi. I'm Travel Advisor Annie. Welcome or welcome back to AGP Travel Planning, where I share travel tips and inspiration from my own travel experiences and research for my clients. So if it's not just all hoity-toity and older folks, who is Princess Cruise Line for? Well, I'll get right to it. It's for me. I have to say, after my week-long cruise abo aboard Sky Princess, I absolutely loved it. But is it right for you? Before I talk about who I think the ideal traveler is for Princess Cruise Line, I want to talk about just a few of the pros and cons that we've noticed, especially compared to Royal Caribbean and Virgin Voyages, the other two cruise lines we've cruised with. First up, let's start with the pros. We really liked the medallion that you get instead of a card. Um, this unlocks the door. It, smells you come in and it unlocks the door before you get there. You can pay for things with this. Um, it also has like a RFID chip in it. So if you order some room service or something to be brought to you, they can find you with the chip and bring it to you. Um, and that's just really convenient. Um, this also tells you where other members of your travel party are. So if you're trying to meet up or find each other, like if you have kids or you're looking for grandma and grandpa, you can find them by tracking their medallions as well, which is a nice feature. I've had good service on every cruise line I've been on. I've always thought the crew was always super helpful and kind and went above and beyond. But some of the amenities I really like on this cruise line are that you can get complimentary robes brought to your room by your stateroom attendant. We also have been getting complimentary ice buckets every day to our room since we do a lot of hanging out in our room. We drink ice water, we like ice on our drinks. So we've had a bucket of ice all the time. And I really like that you're treated as an adult on this cruise line. You don't have to check out towels. You just take one when you need one and put it back when you're done. And there are no lifeguards at the pools here. It's swim at your own risk. So I appreciate just being treated like an actual adult. Also, also talking about the crew and the staff on board, um, I did see some of the kids clubs out and about. They took them out, the kids out to the pool and they were actually playing with them in the pool and jumping in the water and interacting with them, playing different games and stuff like that. So I do feel like the crew is really good, the kids clubs are really good, and it's good for some chilled and more relaxed type families. Let's talk about the food. Everyone talks about how much they love princess food, that it's more of an upscale luxury dining experience. I will get more into that a little bit later, but I will say it was the nicest, most elaborately set up buffet with the most variety of like delicious choices I have seen on any cruise ship. So props to you, you get the best buffet at sea, princess. Now let's talk about the pool situation. One of the cons for me for Virgin Voyages was that, that there was really only one pool and it was very small, mostly just a place to sit down. But here on the Sky Princess, we've got two big family pools, a adults only pool called the Retreat. And then you've also got the Sanctuary, which is like a paid place for adults to go during the day to be on like a sun deck with their own pool and hot tubs away from everyone else. More on that later. But, you know, three big pools plus the wake pool at the aft of the ship, that's my personal favorite. I think that was really good. And like six hot tubs. So really appreciate the pool situation here on Princess. Next, let's talk about inside the cabin. We've slept on this bed now for seven nights. And I can tell you it wins the award for best sea terrace, sea balcony, bed at sea. <laughs> I thought that Virgin's beds were too hard. They felt like futons. I felt like Royal's beds, even on Symphony of the Seas, felt really hard like cardboard and I didn't like it. But the beds here on Princess, super comfortable. The next thing I want to talk about is the Enclave and the 
spa, Lotus Spa experience. I really thought the Enclave was awesome. That's the thermal spa. I like that they had a giant hot tub instead of just a pool like um, Virgin's Thermal Spa does. They had multiple different steam rooms with hot seats and different like aromas. Um, and then they had different shower experiences, cold showers, hot showers, car wash showers. What? Miss. Oh, and the mist shower, I guess, too. Yeah, it was very cool. It was very unique. The hot heated rock chairs were nice. Um, the cool towels available were nice. And the massage was really fantastic. We did a 50-minute Swedish couples massage, and I highly recommend it. Honestly, I've been impressed with every cruise ship shows, from Royal to Virgin to Princess. They've all been very good. Um, in my opinion, the singers and dancers have been good. The special technical effects have been really impressive and really cool. Um, so again, on Princess, just like with the other cruise, cruise lines, I do recommend the shows. I think they are high quality and really well done. So we just had afternoon tea delivered. This was a complimentary perk of being an elite member with Princess. Otherwise, you can just go down to, I think it's the Soleil main dining room, and they offer these same things just down there in the dining room, and you can have them complimentary. Um, but we had it delivered to the room. So first up here, she opened this up and had me sniff it because they were literally just fresh baked chocolate chip scones, and they smell delicious, and they're still hot. So we're going to be diving into that soon then the next one is the little sandwiches just looks like one of every kind of little lunch and sandwich you could possibly think of there have you brought me little cakes those of you who've seen the magicians and then the final one is is literally little cookies and cakes so I'm super excited to try all of that. And then we have one that's a coffee and one that's a hot water for tea. Um, they brought us some cream and two uh, coffee cups. And I'm really excited to try this clotted cream and jam. Princess is very British with their um, foods, and so like you're supposed to have scones with clotted cream and, and jam. So I'm intrigued to try that. And then here's our tea. We got English breakfast tea. Sorry, um, Patrick Stewart, we didn't get Earl Grey. <laughs> Well, a very good morning, everybody, and welcome to the hangar here on the Sky Princess. We're doing the Aviator Challenge. Nice review. The hoop usually does light up, but even one of our ship's engineers couldn't get it to light up today. So, on this white line and get your plane through the hoop. Don't worry. Let's do it. Now, show everyone your plane. Give us a little. Ooh, look at that. It's nice. Okay. Cooper, okay, give it up for Cooper, everyone. Woo! We're going to go down in three, two, one. Hey! Oh. Let's do this. Three, two. Is this, wait, 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 is this your wife? Yes. Picture her face. Picture her face because that's the perfect step. <laughs> oh, she's got her tongue out. All right, three, two, two one. potions and elixirs here that will take you to the next level of your witch or wizard career. Now, like I said before, I know that loads of people are good fans of Harry Potter and things like that, but there is one magic in this world that cannot be penetrated, and that is royalty and copyrights. Bulls and outcomes of sorcery, good things, good fun there. And then the last one, which is probably the more 
Uh, I'd say a flexible category is modern lore. also get blankets for um, movies under the stars, which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> we got like comfy chairs out for this too. Yeah, comfy chairs and blankies. How snug is that? Oh, so cute. about the not so good things, the cons um, of Princess Cruise Line. In general, I feel a little bit nickeled and dimed on Princess, just like I do on Royal. I didn't so much on Virgin, but um, Virgin does have a higher base fare because they include pretty much everything. Um, but just like Royal and, Prin and Princess, I still felt like I was being upcharged a lot. Um, I also feel like this is the smallest balcony at sea of all the balcony rooms of all the ships we've been on across the three cruise lines. This balcony just feels really tight and tiny. I can't even turn the chair the other direction to face straight out. Um, my knees would be running into this. So pretty tight balconies. On to the next con. Uh, I will say the main dining room experience was did not live up to my expectations. I had heard a lot of hype about how good the main dining room food was on Princess, so I had really high hopes going into it, but it was just okay. It wasn't that it was bad by any means, but I found, feel like I found all the same foods offered in the main dining room offered in the buffet, and they were just as good, and I could go get them myself and have a much quicker dining experience. And I felt like the variety in the buffet was much better than what was offered in the main dining room. That's just me though. Thanks for hanging in there. Just a couple of cons left for the Princess Cruise Line, but if you're really enjoying this video, you're finding it helpful in any way, please go ahead and click that thumbs up, give it a like, um, and consider subscribing for more travel and cruising content like this. Uh, my next con is that I feel like this on Sky Princess, the ship layout is very confusing. It's not intuitive at all. There's lots of times where you're trying just to walk the perimeter of the ship and you'll run into some sort of door or barricade that says crew only, or you'll run into a wall where you have to go up and down a level again to get to where you need to go. And I just hate that. I love, I much prefer open concepts where you can walk, pass through the entire perimeter of the ship. So. As much as I love this ship and all of the venues I've been in I thought were really nice, I just am not a fan of this layout. And then my last two cons are my complimentary laundry snafu. Okay, so we're on a cruise, right? Obviously any problem I could have is gonna be a first world problem. So let's just nip that argument in the bud right here. Yep, I'm privileged, I'm on a cruise. But I requested my laundry to be taken last night the clocks did move ahead an hour last night. I get that. Still, I requested my laundry be taken. No one ever came, so I figured they'd take it this morning. So I left it out. A nice little bag here with my laundry. Laundry slip filled out. We went and had breakfast. We went out, walked around, did things. Came back, and I received this really cute little note right here. But it says, Miss Annie, 
Good day. I'm so sorry, but laundry pickup today is until 9 a.m. only. Thank you. Okay, but I requested it last night. That was before 9 a.m. today. And it was one of my elite member perks is to get complimentary laundry. So now I'm just going to have to go do it myself. It's fine. It's fine. But just so you know, make sure you request your laundry like within the first three days of your cruise. I know, crazy. You won't have dirty clothes then. But that's when you need to request your laundry. Otherwise, they don't come get it. And then they leave you a note saying they can't do it. As an elite member of Princess Cruise Line, I was supposed to get complimentary laundry services and that didn't happen. I ended up doing it myself at the laundromat and paying um, whatever it is, $3 to wash, $3 to dry, and then like a dollar for soap. So kind of bummed about that situation, but the fact that they do have laundromats on board could be considered a pro. And then my final complaint is about the sanctuary. That's that paid up charge um, to go into this adults only area kind of in the solarium area of the ship towards the forward um, pool deck area and I like the idea of it because you get waited on you get servers you get your own space obviously because it's an upcharge there'll be fewer people I guess ideally but I just don't like it I want to be able to access all areas of this ship without having to pay more so that's just another example of feeling a little bit nickel and dimed so to conclude who do I think Princess Cruise Lines are for? Um, I think it is for couples who like maybe a little more luxurious experience. Like I said, there's some really nice amenities provided. You are treated like a mature, responsible adult. Um, the food in the buffet is really good. Um, and maybe for families, like multi-generational families who are looking for a little more relaxed vibe, you don't need all the bells and whistles, um, but you do like a few, you know, kids clubs or pool games activities or like they did like an ice carving demonstration just a little bit ago. There is still some trivia and there are still the nightly shows. So I feel like there's enough entertainment to keep uh, families engaged and not feeling bored as well. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.